And we realized even in the early 2000s that we had to do something sustainable to try to address this uh, exponential increase in melting. And that led me to do a sabbatical in Woods Hole in studying algae biology and carbon biogeochemistry. And then beyond that, to really consider how can we enlist life to help us rebalance carbon in our seas and in our soils. Basically, you're mentioning the connection between the mountains and the sea. And I think it's something we focus a lot on the soil and on the land side of things. Why is that connection between the mountains and the sea so important? The mountains help the sea and the sea helps the mountains, or I should say the soils. So I just finished giving a talk here in Morocco where I was visiting with the government. And we met with some of the agriculture and some of the aquaculture groups here and agencies. And it was very interesting because I spoke about my home state of California where we've studied the kelp forests. And, you know, there's a shifting baseline. No one has a living memory of the kelp forests that were off the coast of California in the mid-1800s. But we went back and did the research to find the original U.S. geodetic survey maps from 1850s, 1860s, 1880s, which showed a river of a kelp a kilometer wide extending from Point Concepcion hundreds of kilometers all the way past the border with Mexico. And this was a continuous river of kelp between 10 and 25 meters depth that was covering the coastline. And it was this incredible bounty of nature. Now, what happened was in the early 1900s, we had development of farming, uh, urbanization, but primarily the loss of soil and runoff that went into the sea because of standard farming practices. And that was exacerbated later. And between the silt and the nutrients, the visibility in the water dropped precipitously. Yes, in particular, what we're noticing is that seaweed does a fantastic job of increasing the stress resistance of the plants. And that includes resistance to heat, resistance to drought, and resistance to disease. And, you know, all crops have some amount of stress. But when we get into a global warming situation, the amount of heat stress and the amount of drought becomes severe. And, some, and there, the seaweeds have been able to confer stress resistance to these crops very substantially. It's one of the best approaches. Yes, marine permaculture irrigation is a new product for an existing market. It's over a $10 billion industry already in Asia. And we see huge opportunities to develop these technologies further for regions of Europe, including the Mediterranean, including the tropical Atlantic and tropical and subtropical Pacific Oceans.